So as we go into the next op next types of views, we can see this default view. We have 70 rows. It's read only and we're familiar. Let's take a look at one of the other options. This is also a read only grid. You can see it's very similar to what we just saw, read only. I have my links for those three records, but at the bottom I have a numerous letters. We call these a jump bar. So you may be familiar with this if you've been using CE for a long time, that this jump bar was a default in previous versions and they've removed it for the um, current versions. But it's an option that can be enabled and used for quick filtering. So if I click on one of the letters in the jump bar, it will quickly take me to the list of opportunities that start with the letter B or the letter E. And this is based on the field that I'm sorting. So I could change this, for example, to sort by customer instead. Let's go to T. Now I'm seeing all opportunities for customers that start with T or with N. And I can do so for any of these fields that are in, in the view. I can sort and then I'm able to use the jump bar down below to filter. So it's a really great way to quickly filter records without having to go into every column and do filter by, I can quickly jump and navigate my list. And it's really helpful if you have a large list of records as well, just to index them and jump where you need to. So the default views have unlimited scrolling, which is beneficial and that's what we'd want in today's world. But you do have the option to turn on the paging that we had in previous versions. You can see at the bottom here, I have one of 25 of 70. And that's because my personal user that I'm logged in as today, has my default settings under the gear and then personalization settings. My settings are set to 25 records per page, but you have the option of setting yours to 25, 50, 100, or 250. And what this does is it just pages the record. So I'm not scrolling forever. I have to only go down to 25 and then I click next page to see the next records. So although I wouldn't probably use that on my own computer when I'm working in Dynamics, if I had a tablet or if I was often on a phone, maybe I'd like a different experience. I don't want to scroll forever. I want to use the paging. You can have that set up that the different devices have a different experience in the views. So maybe I have paging on my tablet, but not on my computer. So some organizations may want to enable the paging if we don't like the users to continuously scroll or use different devices. So you can keep that in mind. It's just a, a feature that can be enabled. Now we've looked so far at only the read only grids. So let's take a peek at an editable grid. So again, similar look and feel, but you'll notice that now when I click here, I'm able to actually edit these. I can interact with these fields that are on the form. You see that this one is locked. It does keep the same process as if I am in a form here in the editable grid. So I'm not allowed to edit things that I wouldn't be able to if I opened up the record. You can see here, this opportunity is closed. So every single field is locked. I can't change anything because that record is read only. But this does allow me to make changes on the fly right here in the grid view. Um, it will keep in mind my security or my rights. If there's field security, I still won't be able to edit that field, um, but it's a nice interface to be able to make some quick changes. So let's say I'm a sales manager and at the end of the month, I'm reviewing my list of opportunities that I have. I see this one, I'm familiar with it. I can see that it, you know, it's immediate, it has a high probability, but it's listed as cold. I probably meant to change that to hot and forgot. So I can do so right here, make some changes, um, to the probabilities, maybe this one is really cold, I'm gonna make it down to 30. So I can go ahead and interact with these right in the screen rather than going to each form. So it will save for me with this little save button on the top, I can hit save to commit my changes. But it, keep this in mind as it's an interesting way of being able to make changes if rather than going into each record into the forms, I can see everything as a view, as a big list, and then make changes in that list as well. Now you may have noticed that there's a group by on this form view as well. This is a fantastic way to be able to group records just for how I'm managing my work. So I don't, and especially in an editable grid, I don't want to accidentally change the wrong thing. So maybe I would just like to look at those opportunities that have immediate time frame and take a look at the probability here and see if they're realistic. Maybe I need to make some changes here. Um, and I can collapse or expand the groups as I need to. So just a way of being able to group by whatever it is that I wanted to group by, I can do so here just to manage my work and make it more effective. So we'll just go back to the default grid here. 
I want to show you another option here, which is uh, Power Apps Grid Control. This is the current grid. It, you can see it's very similar to the ones that we had before, but we see some colors. As a note, this one is set to read only, but it's just a setting I picked on the grid. It could also be editable if that made sense. The colors are tied to the choice fields that we have for our opportunities. So those are the drop downs. Within the drop downs, we're able to assign colors to each of the options. So something that makes sense for that option set. So maybe red is bad, green is good for a status reason, but yet red is good for a rating. So you can make them all applicable to each different field. But it's a great way to use a visualization to highlight different types of things. So maybe if it's red, I know I need to look at it. Or if it's um, orange, it's something I should watch and monitor. Something um, for a visual cue for the users to be able to identify right here in the grids without having to go through each opportunity and look at it. Just highlight it, give it more of an inter a nice interface for the user and focus their group. On this grid, I've also enabled the option for group by. So if we click on any of these headers before, we just saw the sorting and the filter. Now I can move my columns left or right, but I can also group by. So if I click on group by, very quickly have all of my opportunities grouped by status. And we can see the count of the opportunities in each status showing. Expanding the groups, I can see the details as well. So I'm able to group on numerous of the fields, depending on just highlighting whatever I have in here, picking them and picking group by. Any of the numeric fields though, they have a different option, which is totals. So in here, I'm able to add in, for example, some sums. I could add in a maximum of my actual revenues to see. Maybe I would like to see my average probability. So I can add in min, max, sum, counts, a way for me to see some aggregate information really quickly about my records right here on the screen. So historically, this has been maybe more difficult to find. I could get some of this information for charts or else I'm ending up printing reports or Power BI reports or popping in Excel. This is a great way to be able to slice and dice your data and look at some aggregate information right inside of Dynamic CE. So I'm sorting and grouping right now by status, but maybe I would like to group instead by rating i can go ahead and do that you see the numbers are all updated right away now those are some basic fields that we're grouping by but i'd also like to highlight the ability to group by dates so this is the estimated close date and if i group by that i have more options year quarter month fiscal periods etc so i'm going to pick month and it's going to show me very quickly my actual estimated revenue by month so this is great if you think, for example, on your accounts, you're talking to a, one of your customers and want to know how much they spend year over year. I can very quickly get that information just by grouping the opportunities, filtering to their opportunities and grouping it here. I have all of the information straight at my fingertips. And again, if we expand, we're able to see all of the information here. You can see at the bottom, I'm getting all of my totals. If I un if I ungroup now, so we'll ungroup by estimated close date, I get back to my main view that we saw initially. So this is my main view, but I still have my totals at the bottom. So you don't have to group in order to show the totals. You're able to just add the totals to the main group. And this is specific to me for my user. I can navigate away from here and come back and I'll still see my totals. I am able to refresh the screen in order to remove the totals, but it is nice that they stay and I can configure it so that I can quickly see. If I wanted to, for instance, filter to only one opportunities, I could do that. And now I've seen my numbers here at the bottom are refreshing for me. So a quick way to be able to see that information, see aggregates right inside of Dynamics, which previously was maybe more difficult to see. Now, focus so far has been on these main views for the opportunity. We saw the default read-only, we saw some updated with the jump bar, the editable grid, these colors, the group buys. Um, this is also available for all of the subgrids. So if in your company you have grids that you access from other records, you're able to use these same different controls and highlights of the colors or the grouping that we had on those. So let's pop into one of our customers, which is Northwind Tra Traders. And on their form, we have a couple of opportunity tabs. So let's look at the opportunity details tab. So you're probably familiar with something like this. We can always see our opportunities by our accounts. 
and normally it's just a static view. So in here we have the um, a couple of the enhancements turned on. So we have the totals at the bottom, and of course we do have our group buys available. We have colors, so we're able to add that actually right on the subgrids as well. So it's not just the main views that these controls are restricted to. Another area that I just wanted to highlight quickly was this card-like view. So you'll probably notice if you're an existing CE user that as your screen changes, the views change from the big read-only grid that we've seen with a scroll bar for all of the, all of the um, columns. As our screen gets smaller, it'll automatically resize to this type of a list view. Now that gives users a different experience. For example, in this type of a form where I've opened one and lost opportunities all in one form, it's fine on this screen, which happens to be my laptop screen. But if I move this over to my large monitor, all of these would expand, they would change automatically to this read-only grid and they maybe wouldn't look as nice. So one of your options too for these subgrids is to force this view so that no matter what, um, what size of screen we're on, it's going to show this card type view, which is a nice interface, just gives me some basic information and more of a graphical interface. So you can do that as well is to update all of your subgrids to have this type of a view for a nicer look and feel.